Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey, everybody. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com. Uh, nightly wrap show. I hope everybody had a great uh, three-day weekend, got some sun, got some food, exercise, fresh air. Again, everything else is just a cherry on top. So thank you very much for everybody for joining in. Uh, if you are uh, brand new, all I ask is take one second of your time. If you are uh, enjoying the content and you know spending some time with us, just click a like, uh, share uh, the video, subscribe if you're uh, brand new to the channel. And I'll do my best uh, every single day to try to give you uh, my unbiased opinion of what do you think, what do I think can happen. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, you know, a little bit weird. We'll get to the little bit of weird part in a second. Uh, maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing. Again, uh, we want to talk about this a little bit later. But NASDAQ continues its uh, melt up, right? Um, again, I think if you've been watching this broadcast in nauseum, you know, again, once we broke up with 50 day moving average, uh, we are just melting up every single day. And not, and again, the market doesn't need to go up every single day. That's the whole point of a bullish trend, but it feels that way. For, for the exception of that nasty reversal on hawkish comments uh, from the Fed minutes last Wednesday, I mean, we've just been engulfing everything and just kind of walking up. Uh, NVIDIA continues to be NVIDIA, okay? Uh, you, you, you know, you're, you're getting to the point of sheer pandemonium right uh, and for all you guys who are riding this thing it's an unbelievable move it really has been uh incredible move great earnings uh stock split coming up increase in dividend all that good stuff and now it's on the verge of going parabolic right i mean it really is on the verge and you see people every single day trying to shorten and shorten and shorten guys re remember this much a, a stock needs um, the stock needs a blow off top for, for, for stock to be in play for a backside move. Two things need to happen. You need a blow off top that doesn't happen pre-market. Okay. You need something like in the mid morning going up 50, 60, 80, you know, hundred points. And then for, for, for the back test to be official, it's going to need to take out the previous day's low. Okay. That's, that's how you, you get out in front uh, and be safe from a, 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 a moving train. That's exactly what it is. NVIDIA is doing none of that, okay? Uh, didn't blow off the top, didn't use the previous day's low uh, as a pivot back to the downside. It's just moving up. Uh, you continuously see, we saw 1175 weeklies, 1200 weeklies. Look, at some point, this will be a pretty big backside trade. That's obvious. I don't think that's uh, anything that's earth shattering or, or news breaking. But you know, this thing can go 12, 1300 very quickly, right? Very easily as well. So uh, for all you guys who are especially brand new and listening to people on social media, that this is a bubble and this is this and this is that, and uh, it doesn't deserve to be here. You know, have common sense, right? The stock is, is actually still cheap. Realistically, it's still as cheap compared uh, to what they're putting out uh, on their quarterly uh, quarterly basis. Uh, you know, again, can you see 12, 1300 before a, a, an attempted blow off top, yeah, I mean, absolutely. So the idea of you know the idea of trying to short it because you think it, it can't go you know can't go anymore you know I, th I think you're, you're you're deceiving yourself and your account is probably crying no loss uh, at some point um, you know so again June seventh uh, that's the split they should at least run it up there again I wouldn't be surprised to see twelve thirteen hundred. Um, the way I wanted to play it this morning, and you know, we pretty much didn't give it any opportunity. It was already up 27, 28 points. I wasn't chasing this thing with the strength. The way I'm looking at it is any weakness, uh, any potential weakness in the morning, that's kind of where you want to get long into rising 60 minutes support. But in my opinion on the risk side, okay, to have exposure out there, there's better plays for me to keep on put, you know, chasing highs, high size. Yeah, I, you know, look, again, gun to my head, I think it does 12, 13, 12, 1300. But uh, into strength, I'm not going to, you know, I'm personally not going to participate. Uh, only weakness uh, into a rising uh, support. But again, congratulations for all you guys who are in this thing, continue to ride uh, this thing as well. Uh, you know, we talked about Coinbase on the weekend, right? 
Coinbase, uh, we talked about the potential of an imminent, uh, absolute imminent breakout, right? Imminent breakout of the chart. Finally, right? Finally today, it broke out. We'll get to the pivots in a second. It finally broke out today. Uh, this is the highest close uh, in this whole formation. And the interesting part about this was it broke out as Bitcoin was not participating. That's a very, very big thing here. So this is obviously uh, the highest close in this whole formation and any weakness should be bought. Uh, the only thing, and I said this in the webinar today, the only thing that's scary about a Coinbase type of play, it really is tied into what Bitcoin does for the majority, not today, but for the majority of time. So you got the greatest chart in the world of there's a, there's a hiccup on Bitcoin and Bitcoin drops 50, you know, 5%, you know, Coinbase can be down 20. So, you know, it's just something, it's just definitely easier, in my opinion, to trade intraday uh, than it is overnight. But again, for all you guys who are holding a runner uh, or, or long overnight, congratulations. Um, nice move today. Gave us a nice move today uh, and closed pretty much uh, within a couple of bucks of the highs of the day. Mara did not participate today. We talked about uh, Mara and we talked about Coinbase. It really does show you uh, the specifics that every single stock kind of stands on their own two feet. I'm still watching for the top of the range here. Uh, when Coin was going up, we did see uh, 25 weeklies and obviously the market didn't respond to that, sold it off, but I'm still watching at the top of the range uh, for the next uh, couple of days. Amazon woke up today, which is which is so odd because Amazon, like I talked about in the weekend video, if I could ever type would be great. Um, if So Amazon, for whatever reason, uh, for whatever reason, it's nice that I'm recording the video and my mouse is stuck. Anyway, so when I get this on, I'll get this on. Anyway, so for whatever reason, Amazon has been weak now for the last couple of uh, last couple of weeks. And today I shorted through 180, went down like, you know, 50, 40, 50 cents, came back up, stopped me out. Well, it was like 50 cents in trade. Not a big, not a big deal. But the the one part that we saw that was very, very interesting uh, about Amazon today was there was a lot of buyers. It started off like mid, mid morning and started spilling over in the afternoon. We saw a lot of size buyers too of the August 200 calls. It, the chart is not there just yet. I, I still think it needs a few days to get back and reclaim the 10 day moving average. But but keep this in mind, guys. There was a lot of buyers uh, coming in for the August 200 calls. Maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but we definitely want to uh, keep an eye on that. Of all things today, ARM broke out. I did not have trading ARM on my bingo sheet today, but here it is. I actually made money on ARM today, which was very, very shocking. Uh, ARM had a great move today, uh, got long. Uh, got long off that uh, 19 level. It traded initially to uh, 22 and a half, came back, reclaimed that Bollinger Band, had its highest close in the whole formation. Uh, you know, once in a while, the, these things will actually go. It, it, Arm is one of these stocks that when you trade, it's like you put on the trade, even if you like the chart, you put on the trade like with one eye open, one eye closed, because you know it's kind of like stank all over it. It's like one of these stocks that you make money like one out of 10 times, this, despite how good the chart is. Today was actually one of those times. Arm, you know, closed really well. We saw some June uh, 140s coming in. Uh, for all you guys who are still holding this thing, uh, if it if it does confirm today's channels tomorrow, uh, you could get a move into that 131, uh, 132 area. So that looks uh, interesting as well. And GameStop, who had you know who had us having GameStop today on their bingo cards as well, right? GameStop broke out today, perfect rejection into the 2650s. Uh, as you saw the news uh, over the weekend, their, um, I think they closed their offering. Beautiful move today. It took out the 2340. Uh, again, we'll get to the pivots in a second and traded right to uh, supply zone. Again, guys, I always talk about this all the time. These lines are not there uh, for decoration. They're telling you where you should make sales. You should. They're telling you where emotional buyers are meeting technical sellers. And this was a, a really, really good move as well. Uh, the one thing, two things that, that are just continuously to just weird. Tesla continues to do absolutely nothing. It just absolutely nothing. And last time we had this conversation was last week. And I said, you know what? I'm not talking about this thing. I'm going to ignore this. You know, I'm going to ignore the hot girl until, and when she's ready, she'll tap me on the shoulder 
and be like, all right, Dan, I'm ready to rock. That was, you know, that was last week. And we saw a, a monster $7 push on Tesla. I want to do the same thing tonight. Okay. I'm, I'm going to leave her alone, leaving the hot girl alone. I'm going to ignore her. Something got to give here. And, and I don't get it. I don't understand why the stock just can't get, can't get going. Had a great move five days ago. And now since the last, since that happened, you have for five consecutive days of lower highs, right? Something got to give here, either to the upside or to the downside, but something has to give. And the one thing that started, I don't want to use the word, it's bothering me, but it's at least something that warrants our attention. And that is the diamonds, okay? So the Dow had this huge push to 40,000. And for the last, you know, a week, week and a half, it's just been going straight down and barely held on to the 50-day moving average. And I always want, you know, I always want to put trading into, into uh, a realistic type of scenario. And I always ask the question when one index is notably weaker than the other. And that question is, well, we understand the great breakout in the, in the, in the, in the NASDAQ. We get it. We got the great breakout uh, in the spies. And now the question is, if the diamonds start to get weaker, right? And let's just say tomorrow, I'm just using an example. Let's say they do lose the 50-day moving average on the close. Well, this will be kind of an open, kind of an honest question to anybody who's trading the equity markets. So if the Dow, it continues to be weak, well, what happens next? Okay. Is the NASDAQ so strong that it's going to go pull up the Dow or is the Dow going to pull down the NASDAQ, which obviously needs a, a little bit of a break? I wouldn't say it's oversold. That's ridiculous. We're only three, three, three and a half weeks into this. But is it one of those scenarios that the Dow can pull the NASDAQ? It's on the table. And if it's on the table, uh, you want to make sure that you are uh, prepared on both sides of the market. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about today's pivots. Uh, let's talk about today's pivots, guys. Uh, Mara again, uh, Sedler at twenty three rejected there twice. Mara never got there. Uh, coin was good today. Coin was really good. Coin two thirty nine, massive daily level rejected there two times, and coin did its thing. What is this? Coin did its thing, right? Here's coin. Coin got above finally the 239 level, traded all the way up to 247, uh, producing the highest close in this whole uh, formation. Great move on coin. Uh, Amazon, like I said before, I shorted the 180 break, went down like 40, 50 cents. Really, they'll show you there's no money on the short. There's like no fear. There's no money on the short side. Um, I lost 50 cents on the trade. And then all these buyers started coming in for the 200s for August. Uh, Neo obviously never got there. MNGI never got there. Tesla in no man's land. Literally no man's land. Uh, not even close to where it is. Uh, Meta closed pretty well. Uh, you know, still needs to get above that 480 and the 480 macro level. Uh, Tesla, again, couldn't get it to the upside, couldn't get to the downside, just in no man's land. Uh, and GameStop, right? GameStop, uh, 2340, that was the May 20 highs, needs to confirm. Congratulations for all you guys who call GameStop. Not really my thing, but congratulations, guys. 2340 confirmed this whole range and traded right to the 2660s. Beautiful move. Absolutely gorgeous move. Uh, Arm, I caught a nice move on Arm, uh, 1850, 19. Uh, needs to build. This is the biggest close and the highest close in this whole formation. Uh, beautiful trade. Beautiful, beautiful trade. Uh, if this thing starts confirming today's channel tomorrow, you could get another move to 132. So that looks great as well. And I believe that is it. I believe that is it. I also had a power outage in the middle of the day. At the yeah, thank God I had a generator. So that's it. That's it, guys. Um, so everybody, hope everybody is doing well. Let me just give you guys a couple of ideas for tomorrow. Uh, look at Reddit, right? Look at Reddit. Reddit had a big, big move off the bottom. Uh, stopped right at the 10-day moving average today. Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. If Reddit can get above the 10-day moving average, uh, this thing can wake up. Uh, look at Microsoft. Microsoft is kind of holding steady here. Uh, it stopped back-to-back -back days, literally at the top of supply. If Microsoft reclaims that top of supply, it could wake up here. Uh, look at AMD, right? Look at AMD. AMD is very, very close. Just got to get above this linear regression line here. Very, very close on top of the channel here. Short-term expiration in the 180s were coming in. And guys, look at Meta. 
Look at Meta. Um, Meta. There we go. Look at Meta. Guys, look how close this thing. This thing's a day or two away about getting above the 50-day moving average. Remember, above the 50-day bullish, below the 50-day bearish. Guys, we got to watch Meta for the next couple of days. If they can finally close above the 50-day moving average, you got have a lot of room uh, to the upside. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And with everything goes well, we'll see each other tomorrow. Take care.